Hello, here we are. This is the beginning of a sub-series, a series within a series. The, the greater series is the Kerbal Space Program Rescaled. I'm still doing things in the 6.4 scale, uh, as I really like that whole thing. But this is actually going to be a design series focusing on an entire series of vehicles. We're still going to be in sandbox. Let me go through, jump through all these things. Look at that. It's my flag. Love it. Um, this is the beginning of Project Soar. So, I did <laughs> I'm gonna, glad I caught that. Project Soar. I'm going to turn that off. We'll allow reverting flights, allow quick loading. Accept. Start. Soar stands for Space Plane on a Rocket. Uh, this is, you know, one thing that you know, an influence for this name came from uh, the the dinosaur project, which was proposed decades ago, but actually never flew, uh, as also influenced the same kind of vehicle as as the Dream Chaser, which I love that thing. It's one of the sexiest space planes ever. Um, even though it looks like it may not get launched, that's sad. Okay, yeah, we're we're going to focus on making smaller, simpler space planes as opposed to the you know these enormous behemoth space shuttles I've done in the past. We're we're done with enormous behemoth space shuttles. I'm done with that. We're not going to do those anymore. We're doing smaller, simpler space planes that launch on top of a rocket so that the actual orbiter vehicle will be reusable, but the the the, the booster that gets it into orbit will just be a conventional rocket. Let's start with one of these here. So our very first thing that I want to work with, let me see, we'll actually call this, this will be the Protosaur. The Protosaur is going to be a, a yeah, it's, obviously it's unmanned. We're using this, uh, you know, the, li the little 0.625 meter uh, probe core to start off with. This is going to be a test vehicle. Its sole purpose will be to uh, demonstrate the feasibility of this style of, of launch vehicle. And also I want to use this as a, uh, in order to, to experiment with uh, exactly how to do a controlled re-entry and land. So we'll start with the small one, then we'll work up to larger and get to the manned vehicles. And I, eventually I want to make these large enough. Some of them will start to carry payloads. I've, I have ideas about how to do that. Uh, for carrying payloads, we are not, repeat, not doing um, any uh, internal internal cargo bays. No, I am convinced. I mean, after after all this time, I've been working with those that particular thing for so long, like the space shuttle. Uh, that is not the way to go. It ends up being kind of a, a waste of mass. You know what? That actually looks like a pretty good profile, just like that. And we'll st all of these will start with the Atlas texture until we uh, come up with a better idea. You see, you've got tweakable everything, which means I need to go through here and tell it that I want all that to be working. Uh, do we want to give it? Let's give it another. Let's give it another SAS while we're in here. Yeah, inline reaction wheel. I guess we don't call these things SAS anymore, do we? Yeah. Give it lots and lots and lots of torque. Why not? Protosaur, there it is. Uh, yeah, so eventually we'll get to a version, do something like the the tail chaser that I made in stock KSP not too long ago, because that that was a a vehicle that I liked a great deal. Okay, so this one it doesn't have to carry a payload. It doesn't have to really do anything, but it's just going to fly up in orbit, and then we're going to exp uh, experiment. Once it gets there, we're going to experiment around with reentry. No solar panels. We need to give it some kind of RTG. Don't we have an inline RTG somewhere in here? Even an RTG that I can put inside. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. We're going to cheat and we're going to clip parts together because I'm a part clipping mofo. Here we go. Those, those who hate part clipping me, feel free at this point to be all shocked, horrified, and offended. I won't mind. So we just need a vehicle that'll have a shape that will allow it 
to be stable through re-entry. High Mach numbers, and also we want uh, it. We want it to have enough pitch authority. Previous experiments that I've done in re-entry, especially at these the larger, more realis realistic scales, uh, being able to have lots and lots of pitch control ends up being the 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 secret to success. Yeah, let's go ahead and stick this little rocket engine back there. Or do we maybe we probably want an even smaller one? How about this little guy? Yeah, okay. What are what are our options? Kerosene, aerosene, liquid hydro yeah, liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen. I'm going to go ahead and ma max out the tech level on all of these. Max out the gimbal range. Why would you even bother having a lower gimbal range? Ideally, we would like to have the... Uh, oops, I didn't mean to turn that on yet. The center mass be right in the middle of the uh, fuel tank. Let's try something. Yeah, the center mass in the middle of the fuel tank, then it, uh, then the, the handling the vehicle will, will not change dramatically as, as you burn fuel. That's the way that works. I'm thinking that because this one is so very small, we're probably not going to do any landing gear. You know what? This one's going to be parachute recovery. Radial. Really, really, oh grief, all these parts. I am um, dressed, I'm riding so hard that with this install, um, I've had to make some very, very hard choices as to exactly what I can get away with installing. I can't, I have only a fraction of the mod parts that I would like to have because it's just running right up on, on KSPs, on Unity's, the with the 3.6 gigabyte limit. Okay, uh, let's make, can we make that one smaller? Maybe size, there we go. Very nicely small. How much delta V do I want the orbiter to be able to, to burn, to do on its own? Uh, in this, in the upscaled system, it takes me um, a minimum of around 7200 delta V, 7200 meters per second to get to orbit. Uh, Usually, you know, maybe closer. I need, I need to budget at least 7,500 overall. And I'll tell you what. We'll try to give our orbiter. I want my orbiter to have. I'll, I'll just, I'll just uh, aim for 2,000 meters per second delta v. Okay. And, uh, let me see. Thrust away. It's already got a ridiculous thrust away. Of course, we're going to add some wings to that, and that'll increase the mass. But Um, now let's take a look and let's do some wings on it. So, turn it over like that. Thank you very much. And of course, we're going with the procedural wings. Procedural wings Mark II. I forget, what is even the Mark IV? Oh yeah, these guys. We have a new exciting shape for the procedural wings. Isn't that fun? But I think I'm actually going to stick with our old comfortable standby. These guys back here. There are tricks that we can do to make this joint smoother, but I think maybe we're actually going to be okay with the way it is right now. Yeah, so a little barely visible joint between them. And see, and in doing this, uh, in in placing the 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 wings so that they meet uh, on the bottom of it, this actually makes it into a true lifting body. Uh, mass per strength, I believe. Let's go with and let's go with like 1.5 because I know that the, we're going to be abusing these wings some. It does make these things start to make these things kind of heavy. And see now we're going to have to add a lot more fuel to this bird. Okay, to keep our 2,000 meters per second delta V. It's okay. It'll probably look better. If it's a little bit longer. Thrust to weight ratio still 4.06, so that is not even close to being a concern. Um, I think I actually let's increase that tip 
size. And we leave lots of space back here because I want like just about the whole rear end of these things to be elevator for lots and lots of pitch authority. It's actually kind of squared off. Bring it in here like this. Even make the tips larger. Because I'm going to do these uh, Dream Chaser style uh, drastic dehedral wings. Uh, I have enough space to have good elevators there. Okay, let's extend it out a little bit more. I'm having, trying to keep in mind what's the rest of the wing going to look like as I do this. Slightly larger, about like that. And now let's go ahead and put some control surfaces on there. These guys. You can see how absurdly huge those <laughs> are for the project. Let's actually just do one. We'll mirror it later. <laughs> it's too big. <laughs> okay, that's. You know, we want that to be come out pretty much to the end of the pipe. You know. Of course, gonna have to give this thing more delta V again. See, my first reaction, I look at that, I think that that is a whole lot of elevator. But then I remember that in previous experiments with all different kinds of space planes, it's always an issue that I'm all the time running out of pitch authority, and I always want more. And we need to make this thing larger again. Uh, let's go ahead and increase the length some more to keep our 2,000 meters per second of delta V. It's starting to get kind of a lot longer than I wanted. We prefer to remove all tanks and reset those. 2019. Okay. I'm thinking that I'll actually shrink these down some. Oops, wrong one. And move them over here. I'm gonna and we're going to Actually, this part where the elevators wouldn't be able to hit, I'm going to put like a regular, regular procedural wing piece in there. That pretty well matches up. I think I like that. And make those. Those are just for pitch. I wonder. Let's say, let's do one other thing. Maybe 1.5 is too big. Let's go to 1.25 and see what. See if maybe we can save some mass there. And our flight test will show whether there's any danger of that breaking. Yeah, it's looking kind of wide, isn't it? Uh, and we're down to half the delta V that I wanted. Okay, we want to kind of blend, blend this in. So the trailing edge matches up with the control surface next to it. Yeah, that's good. Uh, wow, I didn't realize it's still, it's looking like maybe, maybe it should be swept more. Uh, I think I still want to try it as is, though. I, I could even sweep these back more. I'm down to less than a thousand delta V now at this point. Center mass. Center lift. Okay, center lift is slightly behind center mass. What would happen if these things were empty? That's uh, looking really dicey, guys. I think I want to do an all-moving vertical stabilizer slash rudder. That's what I want to do. And it'll be relatively stubby. It doesn't need to be very big. About like that, actually. And this one, again, we're going with 1.25. See, I'm thinking that this whole time that what I was going to do is after I made the shape so that it fit, then I was going to go on here and lift things up like that. Be very, very similar to the real Dream Chaser. Where Delta V is too small and this balance issue is not working. What else can I do? I mean, well, obviously it's going to need more fuel. Let me look at expanding the whole thing. If we make it an even, whoop, an even one, one meter in diameter. Okay. And this, if we make 
and I can move my my center mass forward by making a, an adapter piece here to to blend this to to make this smooth and aerodynamic. I wonder if this this my parachute's too small again too. I can move that forward some large enough. I really should look at look at doing some actual landing gear. That's what I should do. Let's pull that off of there. Uh, yeah, bottom is being even one meter in diameter. Length about like that. Okay, it'll work. That's looking kind of fat and ugly, doesn't it? I don't I really don't like these arrangement of these wings. Uh, let's go ahead and just take a look at this landing gear. We already got rid of that parachute. Turn symmetry off. Got these parts that I put together. I actually went and revised these. If I can find them, where'd they go? Here we are. Small internal gear bag. I took just the the standard. Um, come on, guys. I took the standard landing gear part, and I made them uh, change the attached node so that they actually they're they're designed they're so they're actually internal parts. It makes a great deal of sense instead of hanging outside. Ooh, how about that? Yeah, I think I like that. That works pretty nice. Oh, we've stent and our center mass is moving back. What I, I forgot about this so long ago. Move that up forward. Okay, that'll help some. And we're going to give these things a more pronounced sweep, like that. Okay, that's looking better. And we, and we don't want the wings to be too far aft at this point. Because, that'll, because whenever I put a docking port back there with the, with the later designs, that'll be a problem. It's okay to we'll hide the ugly part of that control surface inside of there. Don't tell anybody. It is already getting to be much bigger than I wanted it to be. But then I guess that's what happens now. I keep on insisting that it, it has to have the... that it has to have this 2,000 meters per second of Delta V. Is this actually a faulty idea? Because it does have... It, is, is going to have a stage connected to it. Maybe that is a faulty idea. Hang on. Yeah, I think I actually want to cease work on this for a little bit. Let's question this assumption. Yeah, so uh, a funny thing just happened for, you know, given values of funny. Um, Mike, I was in the middle of recording. You may notice that the, the Protosaur has changed significantly in the configuration from, from uh, the scene of just a second ago. Uh, we, we had just fantastic, beautifully wonderful uh, commentary that, that it was Hemingway-like, really, concerning all, all the, the faulty design choices that I was making previously and how I decided to uh, stop doing that and decide to do something smart instead. Um, and then my computer crashed. The the whole thing, the blue screen of death. Except it's not totally death. You know, it's the it's more of the blue screen of of annoyance. And and it stopped, and it wasn't gonna work anymore. So that 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 be, that beautiful Hemingway ish ish commentary is entirely lost, and you don't get to hear it. And you know, I'm not gonna try and say it, the whole thing again. This suffice it to say. That I realized where I was going wrong was in the assumption that the protosaur needed to have any kind of delta V reserve at all. It doesn't. It needs no fuel. It needs no engine. It's going to have a a, a, a stage. I don't know whether it be a second stage, a third stage, what that that'll hook up to the back of that thing, and that will take into orbit. That'll give it all its orbital maneuvers, and then whenever it comes time to re-entry, uh, it'll decouple. This I just need this thing to to exp, uh, experiment around with the whole re-entry. You know what also needs a parachute? I forgot about that. Let's stick the parachute on there. 
let me see what how do we want to have this thing set up it's a main shoot it's a single shoot uh, it's currently using this mass we do not want the thing pre-deploying at 25,000 actually want it significantly lower I actually want to pilot this thing down let's call it 1500 there we go let's apply those settings thank you thank you and save it now what I want to put together right now and it's actually something that I got some work done on this before the fantastic crash um, our first test flight of this vehicle I uh, I'm not gonna go for orbit we're not even trying to get this thing into space what really what I want to demonstrate with this is I want to um, I want to get it into supersonic flight and I want it to be able to to have enough pitch control to maintain altitude to control its altitude and you'll know, recover even if it's a slight descent in supersonic flight at an equivalent airspeed of 100 meters per second so we have to get some altitude to do that so if I were really dedicated I would get into the math and figure out exactly what kind of altitude and Mach numbers and everything that we're aiming for but I'm just not that dedicated we'll figure it out you know let me see my SRBs are red thank you very much let's go about this long I, I was getting through a bunch of this figuring out a bunch of this stuff um, right right before the thing crashed we probably want to burn like around a hundred or so seconds let's open it oh mech jab did we in the crash did I lose all my custom settings hello settings what's going on let's restore the factory defaults where's my um, why, why am I missing my basic Delta V information? Okay, I'm back. Went and reloaded Mech Jib. Somehow in the crash, something got corrupted, so I uninstalled it and reinstalled it. Now I've got my Delta V stats. That's what I was looking for. Was my sea level thrust, how much, how much boost this thing is going to have. It actually doesn't need all this. It doesn't need this much boost. Let's see what happens if we play with the solid fuel level and drop our total meters per second down why is my burn time going nuts 60 seconds let's lift that up I want my sea level thrust around actually here let's take it up to like 1.5 because I'm about to hang wings in this thing the center mass is right there center lift is way up there that is incredibly unstable and it needs to be fixed so let's go and grab one of these and that pretty much in the middle and make it into you know lengthen it up that way uh, shrink the tips down that way pull it back into our traditional delta already that's looking pretty close to what we need and now let's go ahead and hang some control surfaces on them. Why are they always... Wait, why are the default control surfaces so just absurdly huge? Look at that. <laughs> Tell you what, the way I'm going to do this, I want these two to be for yaw and roll. And I want these guys to be for exclusively for pitch. Leave it at the default of 20. And I still, I want to move that center mass forward. Here's the way I'm going to do that. I'm going to pull that off. I'm going to get one of these procedural structural elements. And let me see what kind of color do we want this one to be. It's just going to be a lump of metal. Looking for... The, we're just the plain what they call it gray so, yeah there we go gray side here we go and that's just to lengthen the SRB we still have our center lift in front of that and okay let's see what's our what's our boost on this thing 60 seconds um, if we just drop this down to let's let's drop it down to we only need a I only want a thousand meters per second of Delta V expand these like that 
Okay, now! Yeah, that's working. Finally, we got something that looks like it'll work. Okay. Yes, I am beginning at this moment to wonder why do I insist on always making these things difficult. There are people who do things the easy way, and they and they do that in KSP, and they have a, a lot of fun. I should learn to be one of those people. Yeah, okay, hang on. Okay, is this it? Should I stop messing with it? Have we, have we got to where it needs to be? How are these things doing? Are these still set correctly for pitch? Yes. I believe this should probably work. Hopefully, maybe. I guess. <laughs> Save it one final time. Let's launch it. Find out what happens, huh? I want to see good uh, controllable stability. Supersonic flight, 100 meters per second, equivalent airspeed. This is what I'm looking for. That's like, well, okay, actually, before that point, I want to see a controllable launch. And then after the, de the decouple, then I want to see the improved performance out of this thing. Okay, cool. You see, we will not need the alarm clock. What is this? Oh, that's a new icon that wasn't there before. Look at that. Oh, that's because I haven't played around with that before. And then, isn't that fun? Alarm clock, close. And yeah, we'll leave that tab open. Let's get my Mechjab tab down there where I like it. Good. I actually don't end. Let me see. FAR. I want my I want my FIR window up. Airspeed settings. Turn to equivalent airspeed. Thank you. Put that right there. Is this going to work? <laughs> All right. SAS is on. Trim is neutralized. Um... <laughs> This whole thing is set. I really hope this is going to work. All right, let's go. And maybe we got some of that thrust numbers off. Oh, God. No, no, why? No, I saw a good a good thrust weight. Oh, that's sad. Oh, that's so sad. <laughs> His head fell off. <laughs> Okay, well, um, we need to go back. We need to check some numbers here. Let's look at this whole delta V stat thing. Thrust the weight. See, it's only now approaching sea level thrust. What happened here? It's only now approaching uh, over thrust weight ratio over one. Revert flight. Revert back to space plane hangar. What happened here, guys? Is it this thing? Um, okay. Uh, burn time is too much. Let's drop that down. I thought I had that down in like 60 seconds. I remember setting it at 60 seconds. What, what happened? Why did that change? All right. Do that. Interest that that changed whenever I... The number is gone. Okay. Uh, let's launch it again. Find out what happens. Look, it didn't save it. It didn't save it correctly. This is the wrong number down here. What is going on with this? This has never been a problem before. 60 seconds, 828 fuel. But this is not reading it correctly. Save it again, launch it one more time. And it's got the wrong numbers again. Oh, that is annoying as all hell.